always do the more difficult thing first because what you like you are already good at what you don't like you need to practice there is no good subject and bad subject there is no good decision and bad decision we have to all the time think in such a way that we are motivated by everything even if it is a tough task it's a boring task it is a laborious task still it is motivating if we can think like that that is very good for self improvement we all want to improve ourselves and this improvement will come to you when you are able to do that now can cultivate disciplined habits very often our mental energy is getting wasted because we are involving the mind in habitual action imagine getting up in the morning and saying should i walk today or should i not walk should i eat my breakfast today or should i not eat should i do my work today or should i not do how much of your mental strength you are wasting in this you get up obviously if you are health conscious you go for a walk when you are hungry you have to eat your breakfast there is no decision making about it why are we using up our mental strength in such a way that it, we are getting mentally weak by using up our energy you know when you work very hard you need rest so if the mind keeps working hard it needs rest then you are losing out a lot of beneficial things which you need to if you do like this then you have to remember that if we cultivate habits you know if disciplined habits are cultivated that makes the mind strong make yourself realize that this is a habitual action this action does not require any decision making so it is a habit and this habit should become a part of my discipline it should not involve my mind it should not take away my mental energy and make me mentally weak when you start thinking like that about your mind then you find that the mind becomes your friend otherwise as i mentioned earlier the mind becomes your enemy you are not able to do anything much because your mind is your enemy most of us are struggling today because of the enemy which is within ourselves leave alone the outside enemies leave alone the viruses and infections the real enemy which is weakening us is within us and that we have to remove that we have to do away with completely only then mental strength can come then if you are a thinker if you think a lot you know many youngsters especially educated youngsters they think a lot that is wonderful you know great people in the world have become great because of their ability to think but now you see what kind of thoughts come to you i have done an entire episode on creative thinking remember that is what i am mentioning once more if your thoughts take a creative channel if you turn your thoughts into a creative channel then your mental strength increases as i told you already just now that any achievement makes us mentally strong so you put your mind into a creative channel you do something creative then you can congratulate yourself by saying oh wonderful i have done a great thing today this is what we all need to aim for then of course i have done one you know part on reading also listening also so when you read or when you listen to something please be very analytical don't try to say you know take everything as the gospel truth and try to apply it to yourself we have to be objective whenever we read something it is for getting the idea getting an awareness getting the knowledge please do not think 
that by reading something, you need to follow it 100% by applying it to your mind. Unfortunately, nobody reads spiritual literature and nobody applies spiritual literature to their minds, to their lives. They just read it and say, oh, it is, you know, it is too tough. I cannot read it. Some mature individuals also tell me that, you know, it is so tough to understand Bhagavad Gita or Upanishads, etc. I don't like to read this. I would rather not read these books. It is better to read something else. There are many self-improvement books in the market today, not spiritual, but very secular. But as I told you already, and I'm repeating myself again and again, we cannot generalize. We have to experiment. If you read the life of Sri Ramakrishna, especially the manner in which he treated his own disciples, he trained his own disciples, you will know how individual our minds are. No two minds are the same. So no two minds can have the same treatment. Unfortunately, today our education system is such that all of you are put together, 50 or 100 people learning the same thing in the same room or, you know, in the same online class. But what is happening? It is very clear that we are all put into a single group. We don't belong to this single group. Please remember, we should remember that each of us is an individual. If you read a 100 page book, maybe 20 pages apply to you and 80 pages do not apply to you. When you listen to a one hour lecture, I'm telling you so many points. Maybe out of these eight points, only four apply to you and the other four don't apply. If you try to follow everything, then it becomes totally confusing. You know yourself best. I might be generalizing, but you cannot generalize because you are one individual and you will apply to yourself whatever you think is necessary. This is what I would like all of you to remember. Whenever you are reading or listening or you know following something, please use your mind and use it in such a way that you are an individual mind, not a collective or a team here. It is an individual we are talking about. Then you have, you know, very often we are very cruel to ourselves. This is a way of building up strength, but it is also a way of dissipating the strength. When you go for meditation, your guru will always tell you that don't do too much at once. Then your mind will get totally disturbed. You will not have peace of mind at all. Instead, you will have mental illness. So we have to go very slowly. Does it mean that long meditation is bad? It doesn't mean that. It means that we have to go step by step. Similarly, in mental training also, people are often very cruel to themselves. I told you at the beginning that mental weakness is caused by our own thoughts, our own ideas, our own brooding. We go on and on and on thinking. Somebody said something bad to you. Suppose they scolded you or they used bad words against you. For days together, you keep thinking about those words. The words keep playing in your mind. What is happening? You're giving up your mental strength and you are becoming mentally weak. Instead, what we have to do, somebody has said very bad words to me. Now, let me analyze these bad words and let me try to superimpose some good words. You know, you try to put on top, you superimpose the good words over those bad words. Slowly, you try to wash, you know, like if there's a mark in our clothes, we wash it nicely. So you go on washing and washing and washing. Finally, what do you see? You see that the good word has 
removed the bad word you know if you made a mistake in writing when you were a child there was something called an eraser so you could make a mistake you could wipe it out and you could write again when you started writing with a pen it became difficult because if you erase the pen it still leaves a mark so let not your mental illnesses let not your mental weaknesses cause you this kind of indelible negative then you will never be able to make it positive don't be cruel to yourself be kind to yourself but kindness does not mean self centeredness don't be self centered think of others when you start thinking of others when you start empathizing with others then you find that your mental strength is increasing when you participate in the troubles of others mentally if not physically then you find that you're becoming much stronger mentally last point that i want to speak to you about is whatever you're doing to take care of your body you have to now do to take care of your mind we are all trying to build a very strong body now in the last one and a half years we are also worried about immunity so we are doing everything to build up physical strength but what are we doing to build up mental strength are we doing anything at all just think about it feed with good thoughts feed your mind clothe your mind by putting positives you know good clothes decent clothes exercise your mind by thinking what is right and what is wrong and of course give this mind a lot of rest don't keep thinking round and round the same thing allow your mind to get mental rest so these all these things we are doing for our body but we are ignoring the mind now mental strength comes when we do all this so please try don't believe only what i say unless you try and then you can of course argue with me by saying whatever you said is not correct i'll be so happy because you have found the right way yourself you did not depend on my way my way is not the only way there are hundreds of ways and you will find it on your own i'm sharing my ideas you share yours we all share with each other and we all help each other to become better namaste and thank you